Are you interested in how to get into FPGA programming? Well, my name is Grady, I'm with Simply Embedded, and today I'm going to share about 5 tips on how to get started with FPGA programming. So let's get started. Tip number 1. Motivation. Why do you want to get into FPGA programming? Is it to become the next top FPGA engineer? Or maybe you want to get into FPGA mining? Just for fun? Design a new FPGA based product? No matter what it is, if you have a motivation of why you want to do it, you should keep that in mind and that should be your focus on why you want to do it. Maybe not, don't do it for the money. Yeah, if you work as an FPGA engineer, the salary might be good, but if you hate your job, why would you do it? Ask yourself, why would you do it? And actually leave in the comment sections below the answer, why would you want to do this? I'm not trying to discourage you, but I want to be honest with you. It's going to take some time and a lot of hours of work to learn this programming language and to learn FPGA programming in general. There's a lot of concepts that are involved in this. No matter what career you might pursue or no matter what idea you pursue, it always takes time. When you start off, keep that in mind. Why did you start? That's your reason. That's your motivation. Tip number two, choose an FPGA based development board. Now there are many to choose from, but which one is the best for beginners? There are development boards that might range from $20 to $2,000 or even more. But which one is the best one for you? So let's go back to tip one now. What was your motivation? What do you want to do? Where, do you just do it for fun? Do you just want to try it out? Maybe you shouldn't be spending a lot of money then. Or maybe if you know that you actually want to learn a bunch about FPGA programming and you're willing to put in the time and, and you're ready to do it, invest into a board that has a lot of capabilities. If you're getting into FPGA mining, those development boards for FPGA mining can be very expensive. You can use cheaper FPGA development boards, but typically those won't really make you any money. I made your life a little bit easier. In fact, I put together a list of FPGA and SOC development boards on my website so you can check them out and see which one you would want to choose. Those links are all redirected to Amazon.com. so. Feel free to go, uh, go ahead and check them out and uh, let me know what you think or maybe you have some ideas for uh, other development boards that you would suggest for beginners. On my website, I've listed two main FPGA manufacturers, Altera and Xilinx. So you know, Xilinx is the leading company in FPGA manufacturing. Altera is right behind them, which means that they're doing something right as well. So I strongly support either one of those decisions and they're reliable manufacturers. They make reliable products, so you can trust that their products or their FPGAs are working properly. Not gonna say that their products are perfect. Trust me, there are mistakes out there and everyone makes mistakes. No matter in what area you're working in, you can make mistakes. In my tutorials, I've been using Xilinx-based development boards, but in the future, I'm planning to use Altera-based FPGA development boards as well. Now, if you're really on budget, I would recommend going with a development board that is cheapest out there. Honestly, the less money you can spend in the beginning, the better it is. Don't put in a lot of money into something you're not sure about. But you need to keep in mind that the cheapest development boards don't have a lot of features or peripherals on the board. Which means you need to put in extra money into buying additional peripherals you want to use. Or if you already have existing peripherals or sensors, you might be able to use them on that board. So if you already have a bunch of sensors from Arduino or whatever it might be, you might be able to reuse them. On the other hand, if you know that FPGA programming is something you want to do or you're actually studying it at the school, I would recommend getting a development board that can be used for so many courses, either online courses or your personal learning experiences and so on. That would be real to just a Blackboard. Well, now that currently they don't have their link functioning for the purchases yet, but soon they will have an Amazon link that will be out there. So keep an eye out for that. And um, 
I'll let you know in the comment sections below if the link is out there. For example, if you're transferring over from Arduino and you have a bunch of Arduino shields, you might consider going into using uh, DigitalLens Cora C7 development board that actually has a capability of using Arduino shields with them. So you can look into that one. I think that would be a great idea if you're coming from Arduino background. Tip number three. So now that you have your development board, you should be ready to decide on a software. Well, if you have a Xilinx-based development board, you should get a Xilinx-based software. And if you have an Altera-based FPGA development board, you need to get an Altera software. Those don't mix and match. For Xilinx, you can get Vivada Design Suite software, and you can check out this link right here on how to download that software. For older generation FPGAs, sixth generation and lower, you need to use Salix ISC tools, which are different from Vivada Design Suite tools. So those don't mix and match again. So you need to get a different software for an older generation FPGA. For Altera, there's Intel Quattro's Prime Software Suite Lite Edition. Salix and Altera softwares for beginners are for free. So you need to register and make an account with them and then you can download that software for free. Um, so you only need to pay for the FPGA development board and the software comes free essentially. Tip number four, now that you have your development board, you have your software and you know why you're doing this, you can actually start your first project. If you have a Xilinx based FPGA, you can check out this video and learn about how to create your first FPGA project and maybe you just want to know how the software looks like for the Xilinx uh, Vivada Design Suite and make sure you check it out so you would have a great understanding of what you're getting yourself into before making your purchase. Tip number five, keep up the good work. Now that you've got in your development board and your software and you've done your first project, it's time to keep working on your FPGA programming skills. You can go ahead and learn more about FPGA programming in my other tutorials and there's a playlist right here for it so go ahead and check them out and learn more about what is FPGA programming, what can you create with FPGAs and uh, some, some basic stuff that helps you to get off the ground. I just want to encourage you that you, you just need to keep learning, just don't stop. There's just a lot of work for you to learn about FPGA programming. Don't be afraid to ask help. Either write in the comment sections below if you need help with something or if you're unsure about which development board to purchase or whatever it might be. Just know that don't, don't be afraid to ask help. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you're new to this YouTube channel, consider subscribing and make sure you ring that bell to get notifications for future video uploads. And if you like this video, like it. Other than that, Keep up the good work and I'll see you next time.